first video which was shown is was a very old video. By mistake, it was displayed, so my apologies. So the offering will be as usual and not to come to the front. So it will be as usual, and of course, you can take the necessary precautions, but it is not a compulsory one. So my apologies for displaying for the wrong video. Okay, my name is JV. I'm one of the elders. And this morning, I would like to welcome the newcomers, the first time who have come to this Sunday service. If there is anyone on this side, I'll request you to stand up and just say three points. How long you have been in Hanoi, from which country you have come, and where do you work? So three points you can just cover. First, let's start from this side. Hello, my name is uh, Chi. I'm from Vietnam and uh, I work for SNSP Investment. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Kang. Uh, I'm from Vietnam and I'm working for a military bank. Welcome. Thank you. Anyone from this side? Okay, th let's move out to this side. If there's any family or any individual who's come here for the first time. Hello. Hi, my name is Spencer. Uh, we've been here for about a year, and we work at home right now. <laughs> My name is Bianca. I'm from Vietnam, and this is our 16-month-old Mia. Mm. Hello. Uh, my name is Kazuya Ikeda. I came from Japan. I work in uh, Hanam. Nice to meet you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Annabelle. I'm from the Philippines. I've been, <laughs> I've been stranded here in Vietnam for a total of six months already. Uh, I'm a teacher in Myanmar, where I have been based for seven years. Anyone else? I'm sure you, each one of you must have got the connect cards. And and that's one more person. Hello, my name is Abby. I'm from um, Ireland, and I am. I just got here a month ago, and I am teaching in Vin School. Nice to meet you. So welcome each one of you, and I'm sure you must have received the connect cards. Please complete it and drop it into the offering bag, or you can leave it at the back, and our connect uh, leaders will be contacting you and keeping you informed of the various programs in HIF during the week and also the every special event which is happening. Having welcomed the newcomers, now it's a time for people who have stayed here for more than six months, and this being the last Sunday, we need to pray and send them out, launch them out. Anyone who is known, please come forward and let's jointly pray. And Kui Nam, would you share a little bit about what HF has meant to you and where you're next, where you're going next, and how we can pray for you? It's really. It's really hard for me to say goodbye, and um, um, so um, I came to HIF in um, 2016, and then after that, it was has been um, on and off because I was moving to Hoi An and then back and forth. But for all of the time, HIF has been always with me, even physical, uh, online, and yeah, 
and HF, and really thank, um, want to say thank you to HF for supporting me to grow in faith and in life. And um, I'm moving to Norway with my husband. Um, I still don't know what is the next plan God has planned for me, but um, yeah, I trust that God will use me there uh, in his way. I, I knew God from uh, 2013, so it was uh, the first time I came to SIF. So SIF means a lot to me, and uh, this is uh, my uh, family, and yeah, I love everyone so much. And uh, God is healing. Um, when before I believe in God, my health is not good, so I have to uh, I had to take medicine every day. But after believe in God, and um, I pray, and then God healed me. And the, my doctor was so surprised that I, um, my health become normal, and I, uh, I don't have to take medicine anymore. Uh, I don't have to take medicine in the rest of my life uh, about that disease. Uh -huh. And yeah, and. Um, I love traveling, so uh, before believe in God, I just stay in Vietnam. But ap after believe God, and He bring me go around the world. So I, I went uh, ten country in until now. And uh, last uh, last year, I pray God give me an opportunity to change my life, and then God God gave me. Uh, one opportunity to apply to study in Taiwan, and uh, I applied to study, and I was approved uh, by the university. And I also applied the scholarship, but I failed the scholarship. But I believe that this is uh, the way uh, God want me to go. So I um, I go without worries. And um, the other day, my professor from Taiwan told me that one of his friends are willing to pay the, uh, a half of tuition fee for me. So I was so thankful for that. Uh, yeah, and yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lum, and also for serving. Uh, the whole welcome team is here to pray for you and the young adults. And uh, so, Kui, I officiated Kui's wedding just before Ted holiday, and she hasn't seen her husband since. So we're so excited this Thursday, right? Yep. Uh, she'll be meeting with her husband for the first time uh, since they had the wedding in February. So, uh, so really blessed. Well, let's pray for her. If you would extend your hand as a sign of blessing. Lord, we thank you for Kui and for Marcus and for uh, even in this time of COVID and isolation and being so far away that you have continued to work in their hearts and uh, even drawing them uh, together through this distance. And now that finally, Lord, uh, the way has been open for her to, to join her husband in Norway, to be united and to start the family that you have brought together. And Lord, we pray that you would bless them uh, as they... Uh, meet each other again for the first time, <laughs> and, uh, and Lord, uh, that you would just uh, lead uh, and uh, Kui and Marcus in what you have next for them, Lord, especially for what it is for work or study or, or whatever you have, Lord, for, for Kui next, Lord, we pray and we trust in you that you will reveal your will uh, to them, Lord. And for Lum, thank you, Lord, that you've opened this door to study in Taiwan. Uh, that you are providing for her in miraculous ways, uh, that you have done so in the past and you will do so in her future, and you're doing so now uh, again, Lord. Thank you for uh, the years of service that she has been here at HIF and uh, how she has poured out her life into others, how others have poured out their life into her, Lord, and we've seen her uh, grow in, in her faith. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for these two dear sisters and how you will continue to work in and through them, uh, Lord, uh, over the next years. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's now time for the kids to be dismissed. So kids, you can go to your classes and...
this is the time to thank God and I request Hardwick to come and lead us in prayer. Uh, once again, good morning, dear church. We are going to pray together. But before we go into prayer, I would like us to read together the book of Psalm 46. Psalm 46, and we are going to read the first seven verses. So I'll start to read. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depths. Even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by the violence. There is a river that brings joy to the city of God, to the sacred house of the Most High. God is in that city and it will never be destroyed. At early dawn, he will come to its aid. Nations are terrified, kingdoms are shaken. God thunders and the earth dissolves. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So dear church, the common factor at this moment in time is that we are all hurting because of what is happening because of COVID-19. But as believers, we believe that God is our shelter and strength, as we have read in the book of Psalms. So let us pray. Father, we thank you so much. We come before your throne of grace to seek your presence. We want to adore you. We want to worship you because you are worth of our worship and praise. As our creator, and as our provider and the restorer of everything that we have. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege you have given us this morning to start meeting again as a church after a few weeks when we could only meet virtually. We thank you, dear Father, for this. We don't want to take it for granted. Thank you so much for being the sustainer of the lives of all of us. We thank you, dear Father, because you are the provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you because every day we wake up, we have testimony in our mouths that you have sustained our life. Father, as we approach your throne this morning, we want to say sorry for the sins that we may have committed in the, in the days that have gone past. As human beings, dear Father, we know we always fall against your standard of holiness. And so when it comes to time to approach your throne, we know that we have to come and say sorry, we have sinned against you. And as our dear Lord, we know that every time we do that, you are always faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, thank you so much for forgiving our sins. We thank you, dear Father, that you have seen it worth to bring us together again as a church to listen to your word today. 
We pray, dear Lord, that you're going to be with us as we go into this worship service, as we are going to be listening to your word. We pray for Pastor Jacob, whom you have chosen to speak your word to us today. We pray that you're going to be with him, that he is going to tell us that which you want us to know, that which you want us to hear today. But beyond that, dear Father, we pray that you're going to open our hearts and our minds so that we don't just listen to the word, but it should convict us of sin and it should straighten our paths so that we can live according to your will. Father, we want to pray for our church, HIF. We thank you for this family of believers. And we thank you that you have kept us together even when the times are difficult. We want to pray for the leadership of this church, dear Father. We pray for all the pastors that you have placed before us and their families. We ask for your guidance upon them. We ask that you're going to be with them in everything they do as they listen from you. Because these are the people that are standing in the gap helping us to understand the times in which we live. And so, dear Father, every time they approach your throne of grace to understand from you, we pray that you're going to guide them, that you're going to give them your grace, dear Father. We also want to pray for the elders of this church, for your guidance upon them. We want to pray for the workers, the staff of this church, those that serve the church in various capacities. Father, we want to pray that you're going to continue to support them. You're going to continue to guide them so that they can continue doing their work. Father, we want to pray for the many worship groups, the committees that are in this church. We want to pray for the Alpha. We want to pray for the Celebrate Recovery. We want to pray for all the connect groups that we have in this church. Father, we want to pray for the kids' quest and all those that are serving you in various ways. Father, we want to commit all of them before your throne of grace so that you can continue to uphold them. You can continue to guide their work so, so that whatever they do, they are going to do it according to your will. Father, we pray for the finances of the church. We know that we are going through very great difficulties. But dear Father, we have seen your presence in the finances. And we pray that you are going to continue to be with us as a church. Because we know this is to the service of your ministry. And so we have seen your presence in all this. And for that, we say thank you, dear Father. We pray for every family that belongs to this HIF family of believers. We know all of us are hurting. The world in which we live today has just turned upside down. And there are so many reasons why we should be hurting. Father, we pray for your strength. We pray for your protection. We pray for your guidance. We pray that you're going to be there for us. When we come to you, dear Father, to lay our petitions before your throne, we trust that you're going to be there to listen to us and to help us out. Father, we want to pray for Vietnam. This is the country that you have allowed some of us who are not from here to live at this moment in time. And there is a reason that you have allowed it to happen that way. We want to thank you, dear Father, for this country. We want to thank you for the leaders of Vietnam. And as believers, we also want to commit them before your throne of grace. All the leaders from the highest to the lowest, dear Father, because they have to make so many decisions for the sake of your people. And so we pray that you're going to be with them. You are going to always be there to support them. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters, the Vietnamese. We pray that you're going to continue to be with them. 
we pray for revival, dear Father, so that as many as possible can come to accept Jesus Christ, your Son, as their Lord and Savior. For that is the salvation. And dear Father, we pray that this is going to happen because of your great mercy, the mercy that you have upon this country, Vietnam. Father, we pray also for the world at large. The coronavirus has just changed things in a significant way. None of us ever expected that it could take this long and it could be this devastating. But dear Father, we know that it is not as surprising to you because you have perfect information about anything that happens in heaven or on earth. And so we commit all this to you, dear Father. Our prayer is that it should go away and go away very quickly so that the world can come back to normal. Father, we know that with you, nothing is impossible. Even when this disease has devastated the best of economies in the world, those that have the best health systems in the world have crumbled. It is not beyond your authority. We know that, dear Father, you are going to help your people. Our prayer is that you're going to do it and do it, dear Father, as soon as possible because we have been hurting for quite a long period of time. We have been stretched to the limit. Father, we can only count upon your grace for this problem to go away. Thank you, dear Father, for today. Thank you for sustaining the life of each one of us. Thank you for the privilege to come before your throne to listen to your word. And as we go into listening, your word, listening to your word, we pray for your presence with us. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come and preside over this service so that, dear Father, we can listen to the word that you have prepared for us today. We thank you, dear Father, and we pray that everything that we are going to do here is going to be according to your will in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have prayed. Amen. Good morning. Good to see you again. Although it was kind of nice to sleep in on Sunday morning and sit back in my shorts and t-shirt and just click play and watch the service. It wasn't nice, but you know, there's nothing like getting together and worshiping together. And this is what Hebrews 10 says, uh, not to forsake the fellowship of one another, encouraging one another to love and to good deeds. I need that encouragement. I'm so glad to see that you are here this morning also really soaking in the encouragement that we can use, especially right now. We need that encouragement from one another and being together. And that's the title of our sermon series, Together. I thought it was really fitting uh, for us at Westlake. Uh, so maybe at Westlake we need this. Uh, maybe just for this whole year, let's focus on this emphasis on, on together as a congregation, how we can support, encourage, and equip uh, one another. Uh, again, uh, apologies for that uh, video clip about all the instructions about masks and handshaking. That was from the last time when we went from lockdown to services with all these regulations. There is no uh, regulations as such uh, enforced right now. And so please, it's uh, up to yourself to wear a mask or not a mask, to shake hands or not shake hands. But it is true that we want to be uh, sensitive to one another if, uh, if someone rather not shake hand, we just do the fist bump, elbow, or the Vulcan uh, greeting, if you like. <laughs> you know, the word contagious has become such a negative word uh, these days. Uh, are you contagious? Is she contagious? You know, uh, contagious, many things can be contagious. For example, uh, a smile. The phrase is, a smile is contagious, right? If somebody starts smiling, you can start smiling back. 
It's really hard not to smile uh, when, when somebody is smiling. There's a game that I learned from my dad when I grew up, when we were little kids, and I did it with my kids. And it's a, it's a, it's a, I guess it's a Dutch thing. And when the kid is a little upset, you go with your thumb like this in front of their face, and you say, can you smile to my little thumb? Can you smile to my little thumb? <laughs> and as a child, you're like, no, I don't want to smile. But you, you just can't help it but smile. So what else is contagious that is not viral? What else is contagious besides a smile? Laughter? Yawning, yes. What else? Anxiety, true. Anxiety can also spark from one person to another. Happy Bible. Happy Bible. Happy virus. Happy virus. Happiness virus. Anything else? Contagious? I know for some of the students, if you're in the same room, dorm, with other students who are hard studying, that's contagious. I'm glad my daughter is in one of those rooms. <laughs> There's a phrase that goes like, um, something is better, is caught, not taught. You know that phrase? Something is caught, not taught. So what could be that something that's caught, not taught? Integrity, Integrity. yes. Anything else? Creativity. Creativity. Often as parents, we can tell them, do as I say, not what I do? No, <laughs> it's the opposite. As parents, we want children to see us role model. They, we need to not just talk about it, but we need to model. We live, have to live it as an example. But one of those things that is caught and not taught is values. So values of an organization, our personal values, uh, our core values as HIF, we want these to be caught, not taught. And so even though uh, our current sermon series is about our core values, eight habits of a healthy community, uh, this is something that we actually want you to catch while you are with HIF, so that by the time you, you actually launch out from here, you have these habits, you inhibit these core values, and I can talk about this for eight weeks, but that's not going to change anything. It's only if we as leaders and as staff and as ministry leaders, uh, all of us are actually practicing these as habits as Christians. You know, we don't just put them in a frame and hang it on the wall. That's not going to do anything. But we want these core values to be caught, not just taught. We want to become, as it were, contagious Christians, so that if this is something that you learn at HIF, but you go to work on Monday through Friday, people can actually recognize that you are a Christian and would like to become one like you because it's so contagious, because you exhibit these kinds of values. So, and this is how we foresee that this spills over from church into your home and into your workplace. And today we want to talk about the fifth core value, to grow and multiply. And since God has called us to disciple nations, we need each part to do its work. And this is what it says currently about this core value, that HIF has a culture of disciple making, seeking to make disciples of all nations by equipping members for personal and spiritual growth and creating avenues for seekers to come to know Christ Jesus. Well, this core value has its roots in the creation mandate from Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. When God created man and woman, he said this, he said, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Now, I like, this to, I like to call this the great commencement which goes along right away with the great commandment to love God and love others and the great commission to make disciples of all nations. And from the beginning of time, this has been God's intent, his purpose, his heart 
for humanity. And this mandate is still valid for us today, even though it's a bit different for us today than it was for Adam and Eve when it was just two of them. But God's heart and his mandate is that we would grow in maturity in being fruitful and that we would multiply in numbers so that God's people would indeed fill the whole earth. And so what do we mean then by growing? How do we grow? And what do we do to grow? And often we think about, when we talk about spiritual growth, as something that we do ourselves, by ourselves, for ourselves. Kind of like a self-help program. You do your own devotional time, you do your own study. It's kind of like you maybe attend a class or a group to really help myself to grow. But when we look at scripture, it actually doesn't talk about a self-help approach to spiritual growth. Because the Bible uses the language of the body, that we are talking about being the body of Christ. And it talks about the whole body being fit and working together. And one of the things that uh, Linda and I do to be healthy and to stay fit is to exercise. And uh, we've been following this exercise program, a Team Body Project, uh, which is an online program, so you can do it at home, and especially since the lockdown, uh, subscribe to this. And uh, they have so many different workouts, but really the, the core program of what they do and their focus is on a whole body workout, a total body workout. And their total body workouts are almost one hour. And after that hour, you actually can feel every part of your body. <laughs> so when you're done, you know, your whole body has worked out. From uh, the lower body, to your core, to your upper body. Your, you've done cardio, you've done strength training, everything has been practiced. And uh, Daniel, the, the guy who is the coach, he says then at the end, you knew it. You knew it was almost one hour. You knew that you would work out every part of your body. You knew that this would be hard work. And still you pressed play. <laughs> You're a winner. And I've always been wanting to say that you knew that being at church would be an hour and a half. And you knew you had to drive over here and then go home again. And you knew that it would take this much effort, but still you come and you're here. You're a winner. Anyway, I've um, been wanting to say this, so now I did. But the Apostle Paul uses this kind of language of body to describe the church. Ephesians chapter 4 describes, as it were, a total body workout, including all parts of the body working out together. And verses 1 through 16 on the screen, in the Greek language, is actually one long run-on sentence, meaning it's just one main idea, but there are several key ideas that I've highlighted here. And so it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, so that we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. 
And so here we have some key ideas that Christ gave leaders to the church to equip his people for service. Actually, that word equip uh, refers to being fit, to fitness. And now, it's not that many are paying the salary of a few to do the work for them. That's not what church is about, even though a lot of churches may seem to function that way. But it's really about, uh, just like fitness training, it's about a few coaching the many to do a total body workout. Every part is doing its work. So that all can reach unity and maturity, both individually and corporately as a whole body. That each body part works out with Christ at the head and love as our motivation. Now, it may be an oxymoron to use M&Ms when we're talking about fitness, <laughs> but it's about being equipped for ministry and maturity. Now, the M&Ms do kind of represent the diversity that we have in the body of Christ, all of them being different, but they do like, look like they could use some workout. Now it's the role of the church leaders and the church staff to equip the people to do the ministry. Not that church leaders and staff are doing the ministry for the people, but they are equipping the people to do the ministry together for one another. Now even in the first century, there were people who were targeting immature Christian with schemes to catch them so that they could uh, manipulate and benefit from them. And even today, there are many cults and sects and false teachings spread all across the world and even infiltrating churches. Now, interesting, just a few weeks ago, a number of our Protestant pastors, we went to visit uh, the director of the National Religious Affairs Committee as he was promoted to become the Vice Minister of Home Affairs, uh, Mr. Tang. And uh, he gave a speech to us, Protestant pastors, and he encouraged us as he was talking with us, saying that we Protestant pastors should increase our missionary effort. Now, I never imagined that that would be the guidance from the government uh, years ago, but they are more concerned about cults and sects and uh, these false teachers coming into Vietnam from countries like Korea and China, but even from within Vietnam, who are taking advantage of young Christians and uh, other citizens in Vietnam for their own benefit and for, for their cultish ways of, of, of you know, benefiting themselves. And they said, so Mr. Tang said, that he wants us as Protestant leaders to clearly teach our Christian doctrines to our church members so that every Christian would clearly know what Christianity is about. Because, like, for example, he said in Tai Nguyen, there is a Vietnamese man who started his own religion and for the past 30 years, he has been teaching people these false teachings and getting really wealthy and rich because he charges people a fee for their advice and for their prayers and for whatever. And it's benefiting themselves. But he says the Protestant church is benefiting society. So we want Protestant pastors to increase missionary work and clearly teach our doctrines. Wow. This is the direction that we are being given, which is what Paul is talking about here in his letter to the Ephesians. But maybe you think, well, who am I? What can I do? Uh, maybe I don't know very much. I don't have many talents or skills. But Paul is saying that you are a gift to the church. Just before this passage, in verse 7, Paul says to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Now often, when we talk about grace, 
We're talking about God's grace of salvation that has been given to us. But in this context, actually, it's referring to God giving grace to you so that you can be a gift to the church, so that your service, so that your ministry, so that your spiritual gifts are a gift to the body of Christ, to one another. You are God's gift to the people around you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it says, We have different gifts according to the grace that has been given us. And so you are the gift, and you have gifts that you can give to other people. And the body of Christ, our church here in Westlake, we need you to be that gift to one another. And there's so many opportunities to be a gift in HIV. And I, I love it. I love it that about a third of our attenders are active volunteers uh, serving one another. When we do Volunteer Recognition Sunday, it's about a third of the people that come to HIV are actively serving one another in our different kinds of ministries. But many of you are also serving in very informal ways. You might have coffee with someone else, or you may do an act of service. I know there's some that are doing outreach, but it's not part of an HIF ministry. But there's so much more room for you to be a gift, to practice your gifts here in HIF. And so if you are not yet serving in HIF, I would just really this morning want to encourage you to be a part of our body. We need you. We need you to work with us so that we have a whole body workout. And I want to encourage you to join the equip workshops that we are doing. That's why we are doing equip workshops so that we can equip you to be of service to one another. And that's why we have all these different kinds of ministries so that we can help one another to grow in maturity. And one of the ministries that really is in need of more gifts like you is Kids Quest. Our Kids Quest ministry, as uh, we are restarting and then stopped again and then restarting again with so many of our teachers being away or being stuck or being told they cannot come to meetings, we need some more assistant teachers and helpers in our Kids Quest program. So if you like working with kids, uh, please do see our Kids Quest volunteers uh, at the Kids Quest table before or after the service. So Christ has given grace to each one of us to serve one another, to be a gift to each other, so that we may grow in unity and maturity as a body of Christ, but also so that we can grow in quantity, in numbers, in members, in new believers. Because quality and quantity really are not exclusive of one another. They are going hand in hand. Being fruitful and increasing in number is still relevant for us today. Now, speaking of multiplying, I have the privilege to have a new future son-in-law. It was just added to my family Last night, at 7 a.m. in California time, on Saturday morning, uh, David proposed to my daughter, Liana, who I told you before, traveled to California to be with him. And she said, yes. And so we are just praying and hoping and that we can actually have the freedom to fly again and come back to Vietnam when it comes time for their wedding day uh, in some months from now. But uh, David and Eliana are, are serving on staff with Youth of the Mission, running a discipleship training school in Ventura, California. And it's so funny because that's how Linda and I met. We both had done a DTS with YWAM in Amsterdam uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, we're working on staff when we met each other, fell in love and got married while we were with YWAM in Amsterdam. But it's this great commission that's really their heart, and that's our heart, and this is why we are here, that is an extension of the creation mandate, the great 
a commencement, so to speak, that we, all of us, are authorized to be ambassadors of Christ and of his kingdom to proclaim forgiveness and reconciliation to all the nations. And that we may bring people to restoration and be restored into the image of God as he has originally created us. And this was also Paul's intent for the church in Ephesus, which is where he had posted Timothy, his spiritual son, uh, an apprentice, so to speak, a disciple of Paul who had been trained for many years. And he was teaching Timothy in his last letter, perhaps the last letter that Paul had ever written before he, uh, before he died. He was writing to Timothy, his spiritual son, saying, the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And here, so Paul is teaching Timothy exactly what he was writing to the Ephesians earlier, that Timothy was not the pastor of the international church in Ephesus doing everything for them, but that his main focus as a pastor of the church was to pass on what he had learned from Paul for many years. He traveled with Paul throughout the Mediterranean for three years, even being posted in Ephesus. And now everything that he had learned to pass it on to people who would be faithful to not only follow it, but to teach others as well. And so, in effect, you see here four generations of discipleship, four generations of leadership training. It was Paul who trained Timothy, Silas, Priscilla, Aquila, Titus, and Ephesus to pass on to reliable people everything that they had learned who then would also teach others for generations. And so you see this multiplication effect. In fact, there would be many, many, many more as they actually had many more people that they were discipling themselves. And what's so cool is that this is happening at HIF also. Uh, last year, uh, when a number of HIFers moved to Eco Park, how many of you have been to Eco Park? Have you been to Eco Park yet? Yeah, and when you get there, I'm like, I want to live here too. <laughs> it's so nice. And some of the, our people decided, well, I'm actually moving there. And so they started to get together in Eco Park. Uh, started a connect group on Thursdays and started to invite other people and started to have a monthly uh, fellowship dinner and inviting their neighbors and their friends. And just last December here, when we had baptism here at Westlake, we baptized one of the new believers who had became a Christian at Eco Park. And when I uh, heard her testimony, I realized this is... Four generations, because we saw that an HIF leader was discipling the Eco Park leaders who had discipled this new believer who I was baptizing, who already was introducing Jesus to her non believing friend. Four generations. And so this is happening here at HIF. Now, what's so exciting is that today, even though what happened was that during lockdown, a day, so everyone was online, but because uh, Eco Park is in a different province, so it's in uh, Humien province, and Humien province did not have the same restrictions as Hanoi, as we could not meet together, we couldn't have more than so many people in a room, etc., and so we were all at home. They could still gather together uh, in uh, Jody Goodwin's house, and so they started to meet together on Sundays, having a service uh, for themselves. And by the time the lockdown was finished, uh, they kept going. And so we've had a worship service on Sundays uh, at Eagle Park since the lockdown happened, and it's been going on. And today is the first day that they are 
moving it out of the living room into an office building. And it's the first day that we are doing a soft launch, so to speak, of HIF Eco Park. And so that's really exciting. I, I just so reminded when we visited two weeks ago that this is exactly how HIF started 25 years ago. 25 years ago, HIF began in a living room uh, with a, a group about that size and soon enough got too big that they had to move to an office building. And God is doing this again. We're multiplying here in HF and in our region. But do pray, please. Pray with us. I want to invite you to pray for the Eco Park congregation. As uh, when I did meet with the National Bridge Affairs, I asked them if they could assist us in obtaining registration for this uh, religious service. So... Uh, that's not a done deal, as you know. Things don't happen so quickly. So we do have a lot of favor with the Ridge Affairs, but please do pray with us as it is another province and not Hanoi that we can register this congregation. And so we want to be contagious Christians uh, with faith, hope, and love that is uh, caught rather than just being taught. You know, God has created us so that we would grow and multiply. It's not something that church leaders are doing for you or to you, but it's something that all of us working together, uh, all parts, doing their part as the body of Christ, serving one another so that we together, uh, here as HIF Westlake and HIF congregations all together in the body of Christ here in Hanoi City, that all of us doing our part, serving one another out of love for each other, um, that we would grow in maturity and that we would uh, multiply. And so what we have learned in the past from our leaders, perhaps from your pastors and leaders in other churches, uh, what you are learning here, that we would pass it on to other people and that they, again, would pass it on to others so that you also may be part of this four-generation spread. Now, it's really awesome to be part of something like that, of what God is doing. And so as we're talking about this, we're actually talking about being a disciple and making disciples. That here at HIF, we want to create a culture of disciple-making. It's one of our main objectives. And we want to see more of what is already happening in Eco Park. May we have many more congregations like that in all the satellite cities, in all the districts of Hanoi in the future. So that leaders who are equipping people in ministry, who are serving and helping others and to grow in maturity, that then they in turn would pass on what they have learned to others who are interested to learn more about who is Jesus. And this is what's really exciting about Alpha. Coming up again, starting this Tuesday night, not too late to bring someone to Alpha to find out who is Jesus. Is there more to life than this? What is the Bible? How can I pray to God? What does it mean to go to church, etc.? All these questions will be answered in the Alpha course, free to everyone. It starts with dinner and a video and conversation. So, if you have the card on your seat, please do invite someone to join. Because we want to be disciples who make disciples. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for all that you are doing in and through us in our personal lives, even as we prayed earlier. And many of us are, are hurting, and yet in our hurt and pain and suffering, you are there. And in our hurt and pain and suffering, we can be a gift to one another, to pray for one another, to encourage one another, to help one another. And Lord, and as we gather together, together again on Sundays, our Lord, it's a great opportunity to encourage one another and to, to inspire each other to grow in maturity, uh, to serve our children in Kids Quest, uh, to serve our youth in aftershock, to serve uh, us as adults in our connect groups and in the various ministries. Lord, 
we th I just thank you for this congregation, this church, and how many are already actively serving. But for those, Lord, who may be new, for those who um, may not know, how can I be of service? How can I be a gift to someone else? I pray, uh, Lord, that you would show them. And I pray, Lord, that you would enable them and equip them so that all of us uh, may be working out together to maturity, to strength, to total body fitness, Lord. Because we want to honor and glorify you and we want to obey you in being a witness to the nations, making the disciples of the nations. We pray in Jesus' name. Christ encouraged us that we be seen as a Christians if we love one another. And as we are going through these uh, times, troubling times, it could be due to the COVID or not, just life as it presents itself to each and every one of us. I encourage you to share ourselves to others, to share a smile, just to recognize that somebody's there. It could be a word of encouragement, it could be a prayer, or it could be even our resources, because that builds us together. If we are together, we can grow and multiply in unity. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the life that you have given to each and every one of us. We want to thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence, even today, after a break. Even for those that are worshiping with us online, thank you, Almighty God that they can see even the gathering. Thank you, oh God, that we can share even our love to others through our offering. Thank you for the opportunity to give this offering that can be used even in the church. Open our eyes, Jehovah God, so that we can reach out even to others individually. Also, as the church is reaching out to others. We bless your name exalt you, we glorify you, and we honor you. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give, and thank you for blessing us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Well, would you greet uh, one another around you as uh, we go? God bless. Have a great week. And see you again next week.